Franz Eisenman created the look of childhood in the American century, the period of prosperity that followed World War II. From the 1940s to the present, Eisenman's iconic dresses, rompers, and suits, especially her A-line shapes and graphic appliques, have projected an image of childhood that feels simple, visually distinct from adulthood, and somehow timeless. She endeavored to, quote, make a child look like a child. This directive was at the core of her philosophy and helped define what a child looked like in the post-war period. Warren's Eisenman clothes are known for their whimsical appliques, like this wonderful lily motif, or the iconic five-petal flower, the loose applique on the belt of this brightly colored dress. She's also well known for the A-line shapes, and many of her garments are also inspired by historical forms, whether it's the Edwardian sailor suit behind me, or this Renoir-inspired dress, a dress taken from a painting. This exhibition, Florence Eisenman, Designing Childhood for the American Century, offers a new design perspective on the history of the baby boom and the family-centered prosperity that followed World War II. Eisenman developed an aesthetic that turned children into objects to be admired. She wrapped them up in bows like gifts, echoed styles that looked back to children's fashion of America's first Gilded Age, and use clothing to define wondrous family memories. These garments project a sense of childhood innocence, as well as creative possibility. As the first line of luxury fashion for children, full-price Eisenman goods were out of reach for the majority of families, but they projected an image of childhood that was both reflective of key patterns in American culture and broadly aspirational. In fact, through hand-me-downs, fabric sales, factory sales, and now thrift shops, many, many more parents have been able to outfit their children in Florence Eisenman clothing. Eisenman clothes often presented children as adorable bounded objects. Objects that might seem like geometric shapes in the 1950s, but also as sweet little packages that appealed even to Barack and Michelle Obama. In 2008, the company reprised Florence Eisman's original embroidery technique to create over 100 personalized garments for Barack and Michelle Obama to give as presidential gifts. By the mid-1950s, Florence Eisman created what were called brother-sister go-togethers. They were garments that allowed brothers and sisters to match, be part of a pair, be part of the same family, but not be dressed identically. The flower on a dress for a girl, for the sister, might be transformed into an arrow for the brother. On these Tyrolean brother-sister go-togethers, the hearts on this dress for the sister are transformed into a vertically-oriented train for her brother. In Florence Heisman's design process, her main inspiration was fabric, leading her to travel internationally to source fine European fabrics even leading her to win the 1956 Swiss Fabrics Award. Eisenman clothes also presented young women as more worldly or sophisticated than other garments from the same period. With math problems and flags from different nations, the clothes encouraged young girls to navigate an international world in sophisticated ways, wearing garments that communicated an American identity that was both worldly and cultured. Many Eisenman garments, like those designed explicitly for the holidays or for summer vacations, featured matched family groups. Documented in family photographs, these groups of siblings and matching clothes could become really treasured family memories. Documenting a sense of wondrous innocence that parents tried so hard to provide for their children through these activities. The Florence Eisenman package dress, like the one shown here, allowed children to be wrapped up like a Christmas package with a big red bow, in this case personalized, to Joanna with love. In 1963, Florence Eisenman designed the first ready-to-wear clothing line for children with disabilities under the Functional Fashions label. One key goal of this line was to reduce discrimination that differently abled children felt as a result of not dressing like their peers. Discrete features such as large shoulder buttons and simple A-line cuts allowed children to look and feel their best in clothing that they could manage more easily. This was especially important at a time when the ability to dress and undress oneself was a marker of physical independence, mental well-being, and normalcy. 
again, and this time to talk about children's clothes is Opal Roberson, who is the Extension Clothing and Textile Specialist here at Iowa State University. This dress uh, unbuttons at the shoulder line. Uh, she might need a little help with this in the beginning, but she can get in and out of it herself. And this is part of the development of the child is to learn how to handle all this uh, clothing. These clothes are not any different because we're, they're designed for handicap. They are adapted, you see, so that children who wear them will not be set apart from their playmates, from any group that they uh, want to go into. This would not do. This is not acceptable behavior in designing children's clothes to set them apart. They must belong to a group, and clothing helps children to belong to a group as it helps the rest of us, too. At the same time that Eisman's functional fashions extolled the importance of children fitting in, the brand was building an ethos of standing out. The 1960s saw the creation of the Maud Eisman child, whose clothes represented playful style statements in the form of fashionable A-line silhouettes and abstract geometric patterns. 1980s Florence Eisman garments are indicative of their time. Knits for more casual events and easier laundering, and appliques relating to digital play, such as video games, and the development of a creative child who knows how to navigate new technologies. Eisenman clothing defined childhood as a distinct period of life that was simultaneously fleeting and enduring, and worth the investment of both time and money. Whatever might lie ahead, treasured Eisenman garments, documented in beloved photographs, seem to argue that children were at the center of their families. Investment in this image of childhood, particularly in a gendered, creative, international child, was also perceived to have both political and cultural value. Florence Eisenman designs are often repeated year after year, reconfirming what both the company and customers proudly refer to as a, quote, timeless look. This design aesthetic, grounded in the child-centered world of the post-war period, continues to convey the comforting vision of an innocent childhood more than 70 years later.